beautiful souls. Welcome to another video. I am Brittany Shawley. This is my Miracles of Mind ministry, where we learn to change our minds to think with love and live according to the laws of God. Thank you so much for being here. I want to start this conversation, the you know unfolding of this topic with a story. And I feel that this will help you to understand where I'm coming from and why I feel so compelled, so guided, so inspired to share on this topic today. So this story uh, begins with my A Course in Miracles study group. We meet every Tuesday. I'll put links below if you're curious to learn more about that. But I open up the room about 30 minutes before we meet and study the text of A Course in Miracles and go really deep into the text. And so that 30 minutes ahead of time is a time for us to come together as equals, to communicate, to ask questions, to share ideas, to wrestle with the ideas in A Course in Miracles. And it's such a, an intimate gathering um, that I, I really pay attention to what goes on there and what is asked there. And one of the questions that came up this week was, what do we do with this idea of you spot it, you got it? Because in our Course in Miracles community for decades, we've been told the teachers in A Course in Miracles have told its students that if you spot something in your experience, then it means that you got it, you have it, it's your projection. So in other words, if you are in a conflict with someone and this person is berating you, attacking you, screaming at you, yelling at you, and even if you're like defenseless and not saying anything and not like responding or getting like triggered by it, they would say that that's your projection because you are seeing it. So the fact that you spotted it and you see it, that means that it's your projection and you need to claim ownership of that and you need to correct your own misperception because of what you see. So this question, is that true? That like, if you spot it, you got it. It, it came up and I said very simply that no, that's not what Jesus teaches in A Course in Miracles. That's not what it says in A Course in Miracles. And that's a misunderstanding of the use of perception and, and, change, and, and changing our mind and thus changing the projections that we have in the world. And so I wanted to break this down a little bit. And so I gave them an example because it happened to me. It happened to me recently, actually. And so I wanted to share this example with you all. So in my experience, within a matter of a week, I met with one person and they were asking me questions about just life and living and A Course in Miracles. And I gave them whatever answers came to me in the moment. I am one who prays and who listens and who lets myself be used. So I don't teach from this intellectual understanding of thinking that I know more than other people. I teach from this perspective of really trying to listen and understand the person and let the spirit, let the Holy Spirit share and communicate the words that need to be given to this person. So this one person in particular, I shared whatever came through me that day, y'all can't even fully remember sometimes because I'm just the channel on the vessel. But when I shared this to this person, what happened is they just in front of me, they just like unraveled like their thoughts about themselves, their entanglement that they got themselves in the problem that they were trying to fix and solve on their own just became unraveled. And they saw something that they never saw before. And this new vision for them brought them so much peace and so much gratitude that they just cried tears of joy in front of me. And we had this beautiful healing exchange that I, I am deeply grateful for. And so it, it was a miracle. It was a miracle. It was a shift from fear to love, right? It was a shift from pain to peace. And I was just grateful to be there as, as part of like a witness to that experience. So that's one experience. But then later on in that week, I had a different person come up to me, ask very similar questions. They asked, had similar problems, not exactly the same in form, but very similar problems. And when the answer was coming through me, it was almost exactly the same because truth is simple. And, and, you know, it doesn't, it doesn't take a lot of words to express it. And so the way that it came out was almost exactly the same as the other person, but with this person, they didn't seem to hear me. Instead of being like, oh my God, responsibility is my power. They saw, oh my God, responsibility means I'm to blame. It means I've done something wrong. And they went into this guilt trip and they actually got upset and they got irritated and they got annoyed at what I was saying and what I was offering. And so to me, as the one who's offering help, offering service, offering these miracles to these people, I have two drastically different responses to the same answer that I gave to them. So what's up with that? Why is it different? And when I brought this up to the group, one of the people says, well, we would be told that it's because you have both in your mind. And I was like, okay, but let's, let's unpack this a little bit more. 
all right, you can say that I have both of those in my mind. And now because this person, you know, flipped out on me, I have to atone for that. And I have to correct that. But what I reminded these beautiful souls of is that I am responsible for what I think, and I am responsible for what I give. And I will receive the results of my thinking, and I will receive the effects of my giving. So when I give miracles, you better believe that's what I receive. And, and so I will always get the results of my thinking. And that's empowerment. I'm always going to get the results of my thinking. That's a dependable law of the universe. Okay. But that same thing applies to y'all, right? It, the same thing applies to any student, any pupil that I'm speaking with or helping, right? That they are responsible for their thinking and they are responsible for their conclusions on their thinking and they're responsible for what they give. So they will receive the results of their thinking and they will receive the effects of what they give. It, the same laws apply to them as it applies to me. And so with this one person, she was open-minded and willing to receive what I gave to her as a blessing. And it was the other person was unwilling to receive what I gave them as a blessing. And they saw it as a curse, as an attack. And so they didn't receive it. I am not responsible for if someone receives the truth from me or not, that's not my job. My job is to be vigilant in my mind for the thoughts I think with God, for my loving thoughts that I share with him and with all, and to let anything that is opposing that love to be undone in my mind through the Holy Spirit. That's my job. And then once I've forgiven, I'm to give what I've received, but I am not responsible for somebody else receiving and hearing what I say or not receiving and not hearing what I say. That is completely and entirely up to them. It's up to them. So when we come back to this question, is it, if you spot it, you got it? Well, no. Because what that, that person who didn't receive the message, that didn't make me doubt truth. That didn't make me doubt myself. That didn't make me doubt my prayer and asking to be used and that I was used. What it did is it helped me to see where they were in their thought system more. It helped me to have more understanding of what they're thinking and moving through and the difficulties that they're having. It brought more compassion to my heart and to my mind because I didn't lose sight of who that person was. I remained seeing them as a child of God, knowing that I'm a child of God and that when I let myself be used to help another child of God, I am, I am. And so I trust that. And so in my mind, what's happening is I say, okay, well, maybe you're not ready to receive it now. Maybe you will later. And I have faith in that. I have faith that what I gave was to the Holy Spirit, right? I have faith that what I gave was to the Holy Spirit. So I didn't believe their illusions to be real about themselves. I didn't believe their errors to be real about themselves. I didn't judge them. I continue to love them even though they attack. So that's not my error. So let's keep fleshing this out. I've had experiences in the past where I've done the same thing. I've shared some truth. People get triggered by it. They get upset by it. They leave me. They delete me off Facebook. They don't want to talk to me for a while. Months, years go by. And these people will come back into my circle and be like, oh my God, Britt, I finally understand what you were saying. Oh my God, that is, that's true. That's what's up. Oh my God. And I'm so sorry. Like, I'm so sorry that I projected my fear onto you, but thank you so much for not judging me and just loving me and holding that space for me to navigate and figure it out so that I can come back when I'm ready. Okay. So I've seen miracles happen later on when I don't lose faith in my brother and I don't lose faith in myself for offering the answer or the miracle or the healing to my brother. So their effects or their receiving or not receiving what I give is up to them, but it doesn't affect me. But if that person who got triggered, didn't like what I had to say, started attacking me back, getting upset at me, and I took it personally, I retaliated, I got upset, I got triggered, I pushed back and attacked back, then that's my error. Then I have something to atone for. But I have something to atone for when I take it personally, or I think it's real. If I think it's real and I get hurt by it, I have to atone for it. If I get triggered, I have to atone for it. But if I remain in the state of grace and they're flipping a lid, freaking a deaky, and I'm just like at peace, and I'm just holding the miracle vision in my mind for whenever they're ready to receive it, their errors are not my errors. I'm not responsible for their thinking. They are. I'm responsible for my thinking. So I need to be radically honest with myself if what others say or do affects me or triggers me. I have to be radically honest with myself if what people do or don't do makes me think that anything other than God and his children and, and heaven and reality is real. 
right? It's that idea of what is real to me, what is real to me. And all of the A Course in Miracles is saying that anything that is not love is not real. Love is God and love is changeless and it's eternal. And it's as he created us to be. So we are learning to deny error and acceptance of truth. So when my brother is spinning an error, it's my job to deny error and hold him in the light of truth. If I don't do that and I get triggered, I need to heal my error because I'm, I'm sharing the same error with him. I wouldn't be triggered by him if I didn't share the same error. I wouldn't be annoyed, pissed off, frustrated, upset with him if I didn't share the same error. So if I'm pissed off, upset, or triggered by him, I share the same error and I need to forgive and I need to atone. Absolutely. But that's not always the case. So it's not a law. It's not a rule that if you spot it, you got it. That's just not. And we can use Jesus as an example. Okay. So in A Course in Miracles, Jesus says that he became a savior because he saw the, he saw, what does it say? He saw the false, but didn't make it real. I'll put the quote on the screen because I think I butchered that. But it's the idea of like Jesus was a savior because he saw the false, but he did not accept it as true, right? So it's the same thing in, in how he's teaching me to see that I can see the false. I can see where my brother's in error. I can see that his, his fear is rampant. I can see the wars in the world. I can see the, the abuse and the attack and the suffering in the world. But in my psyche, in my subconscious mind, not just like, oh, an intellectual thought, it's not real. No, it's not a concept. It's a vision right? So it's a vision that allows us to recognize that that's not real. And when we recognize that that's not real, it doesn't affect us in any way. And that's what happened to Jesus. That's why when he was being crucified, he can remain in that space of they know not what they do and to love them and to forgive them and to be in the peace and to not retaliate and to not attack and to not blame and to not defend. That's how he was able to do that because he knew that what is illusion is illusion. What is false is false. And what is true is true. And so he anchored his mind on what was true. And what is true is that we are God's innocent, beloved son with whom he is well pleased, even if we make mistakes in form. And so Jesus was able to see our innocence that we don't know what we're doing when we're thinking with the body and thinking with the ego and thinking with the thoughts of the world. We don't know what we're doing. So we deserve forgiveness. We deserve love, not further condemnation and judgment. That's what Jesus demonstrated. And what he also demonstrated is that when people come to him, such as the, the brother who was infested with demons, right? That wasn't a testament to Jesus' psyche. Like Jesus wasn't infested with demons, okay? Jesus overlooked the demons and he was able to communicate to the soul and bring the soul resurrected, like back to life, free of the fear, free of the demons, free of the sin, free of the past, because he looked on to the child of God that's innocent and he loved him beyond his demons. He saw beyond his demons. He saw beyond the darkness. He saw beyond the pain. He saw beyond the body and he looked upon the truth and the truth for Jesus was real. And when he offered the vision of truth to our brothers and our brothers accepted it, boom, miracle. But he was surrounded by thousands of people. Not everyone experienced a miracle. And that's because miracles are a decision. Heaven is a decision that we must make. Healing is a decision that we must make. Okay. And so that's why Jesus says, it's your faith that heals you. Because those who healed had faith in Jesus, had faith in Jesus' vision that he was offering them, and had faith in the truth, in love. And so they were healed. But the, the, the people who were unhealed that surrounded Jesus weren't a reflection of him. They weren't a reflection of his psyche. Jesus had the opportunity to decide for himself what is real in those other people. And he chose. And he was not confused. And he was not dismayed. Okay? He, he, he didn't get triggered by the illusions of the world because he saw them as illusions. But he also realized that my brothers are here and they're trapped in an illusion. And so I want to help them. I want to serve them. I want to bless them. I want to offer them miracles. And that is what he did. Okay, So it's not about you spot it, you got it. We're all going to be insane until the end of time if that's the case because this world right now reflects insanity. So that's just crazy beans to me. Okay, But what it is is that we need to look at these things and remind the mind that it's not real. Remind the mind that illusions aren't real. Remind the mind that pain is not real. Remind the mind that fear is not real. And when we do that, when we look upon the truth, we're there as the miracle worker that we are being trained to be. Okay? So this is <laughs> basically the answer that I gave to the beautiful brothers and sister souls who gathered today, that yeah, this week. And um, just an extra shout out to RJ because it was your question. And thank you so much, brother. I appreciate all of this so much. But that's 
my answer to that, my friends. Okay. If you spot it, you got it. No, that's not how it works. But if you spot it and you're triggered by it or you make it real, then you got it. Okay. So there's a, there's a difference in there. So let your own inner guidance be your compass and be your, your director and pay attention to how you feel when you're in moments with other people. Okay. Because if you're, you're, if, when you pay attention to how you feel, you will know if you're in alignment with love or if you're in alignment with fear strictly based on how you feel. So let yourself almost like disregard whether that person has accepted what you said or have not accepted what you said and focus on what you, you're thinking about who they are and what you're thinking about what they said. Because if they're angry and pissed off and fearing and you're believing it's real and you're taking it personally, you are in the dream, you're asleep along with them and you need help just as much as they do. But you know what? That's what miracles are here for. That's what Holy Spirit and Jesus is here for, to, to help bring us back to sanity, to help bring us back to the peace, to help bring us back to proper perspective. Because when we see things properly, we're going to act properly. And when we act properly, we are demonstrating the love and the kingdom God to our brothers and sisters to help them be inspired and be reminded of the love and the light that we are. So they too can rise up and, and accept their position as miracle workers and as light of the world along with us. Okay. So that's what we're here to do this for. Be the demonstration of the light, be the demonstration of the spirit, be the demonstration of a forgiven perspective so that you can hold that container. You can hold that space of love, no matter what our brothers and sisters need to navigate through in their own psyche and in their own emotions. That's how we can really be of service to others, my friends. Let that be the focus that we take with us as we turn off this video and go about our days. So my friends, if this was helpful to you, please give me a yes below, or at least a like and subscribe um, and share this with anyone that you feel may benefit because having a proper, correct, understanding of what the A Course in Miracles teaches is supremely important because again, we want to experience the fruits of the spirit that are our birthright and given us by God as his child. Amen. <laughs> I love you beautiful souls. Have a blessed day and I will see you in the next video. Thank you.